Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guest Jax, Hello. who's a local guy in our area that is a recent third gen owner and he needs a little help with his rig. He's having a little bit of power steering issues where the power steering is whining a little bit on tight turns. He feels that the steering's a little stiff. What we're gonna do for Jax today is we're gonna do a flush. Now, if you know our channel, we have a low tech flush method, which there's a link right up above. You wanna click on it. It's using a turkey baster by sucking out old fluid, replacing it with new fluid, repeating that cycle over and over again till the fluid looks good. What we're gonna show you today is gonna to be a more complete style of a full flush by using the return line that's coming from the steering rack going into a bucket and we're going to show that whole process when we get to the engine so i'm not going to try to explain it right here and then after we get the fluid looking really good the next step we're going to do is we're going to pull the power steering reservoir off the pump so we can clean the fine mesh filter screen on the bottom of the reservoir it's pretty well known that that screen could get blocked up with a lot of junk especially if you haven't been renewing your power steering fluid on a regular basis it, it's kind of one of those things that people forget about they remember their engine oil they remember their transmission fluid and their differentials and transfer case but the power steering is kind of one of those things you just oh yeah it works and you forget about it well that fluid over time gets black and it develops these black deposits on that fine mesh filter screen and it gets blocked up and what happens when it gets partially blocked up it starves your steering rack of fluid and that's where you get that whining and the power steering just doesn't work as well so we're going to pull the reservoir off and we're going to show you how you can clean out that screen to where now you're going to have a good flow of fluid from your power steering pump to your steering rack and back so we're going to use the factory service manual as a reference of course because i have one right here and we're in the steering section of my 2000 toyota 4runner manual so we're on page sr41 in my manual and it's showing a parts breakdown of the pump and all the related torque specs that you'll need. So what we're gonna be using mainly for torque specs is right here for the reservoir. So there's three bolts that hold this reservoir onto the pump. There's one in the front and there's two on the back and it gives you the torque specs right here. And the next page basically shows the steps of how you would remove the pump. And we're not gonna remove it, but we're gonna be doing part of the steps by removing the air cleaner box out of our way removing the return hose, and then we're gonna couple that return hose to another hose that I bought at O'Reilly, and we're gonna run that into a container and do the flush process we'll show you uh, when we get to the engine. So we're not gonna do all the steps that you're seeing on page SR42, but we're gonna be doing some of them. So we have a nice prop here for you, and you're wondering, where did you get this power steering pump? Well, you remember the V8 swap video we did for Mikey? He was gonna get rid of that engine because he couldn't find a buyer. So I went over to Wes's shop where the V8 swap was done and I basically stripped everything I could pull off that engine. The only things I left are the head and the block. So this makes it nice to be able to show you where the bolts are with it off the engine. So the front bolt that you have to remove to get the reservoir off is right here. Now, when I flip this around, you'll see the other two bolts. You got one here and one here. This makes it nice to be able to show you the three fasteners you have to remove to get this reservoir off the pump. This right here is where the return line connects to and then this is where the pressure line connects to that sends the fluid from the pump to the steering rack and then it returns on the return hose. Now that we explained how we're going to remove the reservoir while it's on the engine, let me go over the stuff I bought at O'Reilly and at Home Depot so we can do this flush. At O'Reilly, I bought a few things. I bought some Dex Merck fluid, which Dex Merck is compatible with Dextron 3 automatic transmission fluid. So there's different options you can go. All you have to do is you gotta make sure that the fluid you're buying is compatible with Dextron 3 and it will be fine for your power steering system. The next thing I bought is a hose mender. What is a hose mender? It's a double-sided barb. So what you're seeing here is inside this side of the hose. I first wet it with a little bit of transmission fluid so it would slip in easier. So I sunken in 
halfway and just put a hose clamp on there to clamp it in place. So that's what the hose mender is. It's basically a way to couple two hoses together. And this is a 3 8 inch hose mender. Another thing that we bought were hose clamps. And the hose clamp size that I bought are 5 16 to 5 8 inch. It could work for 5 16 all the way up to 5 8 inch applications. And then another thing I bought is I bought a bolt. So I went to Home Depot and I figured a 7 16 inch bolt would fit well into the inner diameter of the hose I bought for this job. I bought a two and a half inch length bolt because I don't want the threaded portion. I want the smooth steel shank of the bolt. That's it. So what I did is I took the bolt I put it in my vise and I took a reciprocating saw and I cut off the threads and then I cleaned up the edge with a file so it's nice and smooth. Then I took a short section of the hose I bought and I again lubricated the bolt with a little bit of automatic transmission fluid so it would slide in easier. So this is basically a stopper and so the purpose of this little section of hose with the bolt being a stopper, this is going to attach to the return line nipple on the reservoir to block it off while we're doing the flush procedure. The hose that I did buy at O'Reilly is a 3 8 inch fuel injection line. I did ask for power steering line but they didn't sell it in bulk so I bought three feet of 3 8 inch fuel injection line so that's the hose I'm using for the flush procedure. Another thing we're going to use for this job is we're going to use some type of cleaning product that cleans well and it's going to dry clean so we're going to use either some brake cleaner or we're going to use this product Clean Streak. They're both kind of chemically similar. They clean really well and they dry really fast. And so this is what we're going to use to clean out the inside of the power steering reservoir and get all the black junk cleaned out of the filter on the bottom of the reservoir. The other thing I bought is a everyday funnel that you use for automotive applications. It's a pretty small one. and the diameter of the end of this funnel fits nicely into the opening on the top of the power steering reservoir so that's why I'm choosing this. You could also use maybe an automatic transmission fluid funnel but this is nice and compact and I think it's going to work well. It's a small one and you could get this at any auto parts store. The last thing that we're using is a food grade one gallon container. I've used this when doing the coolant flush on Sean's rig or you can buy the bigger containers, the five core containers, and you can pour it in here and get an accurate measurement of how much you're adding. I will put a link in the video description to where you can buy this on Amazon. I'll list all the other parts that we bought for this job in the video description as well so you'll know what exactly we bought for this job. So here's your power steering reservoir. And take the cap off and we're going to use our turkey baster and we're going to draw some fluid out just to see what this fluid is looking like currently. And I'm going to transfer it to a drinking cup so we can see how black and nasty that fluid is. And I can tell you that that's pretty bad. That's not that great. So we're going to keep drawing it out and get as much of it out as possible so when we remove the return line it's going to make less of a mess. Go in for one more. I think this is about as much as I can get in there, how far I can reach here. Okay. Just as a comparison, I'm going to pour some brand new fluid in right next to it in a cup, and you can see the difference. It's pretty dramatic. New fluid, very dark and old fluid. So that's one of his problems right there, is that his fluid is in desperate need of changing. There's a reason why the factory service manual suggests removing the air box when you're working on the pump. It's pretty darn easy to remove this. It's just three fasteners. It's a bolt here. It's a bolt down here, right there underneath that wire. And then there's another bolt right here. And then all you gotta do is remove the clamp from the air tube that goes to the throttle body and disconnect this sucker too. And you can pull this out of your way so you have more room to work. So we're gonna be working in this area with the return line and so I'm just going to get this box out of my way to make life easier for me. So I'm going to start by removing this clamp, getting this clamp off the air box, and then we'll attack the bolts. I'm going to remove this clamp, just squeeze it, pull it back. Whoop. It's not that tight. Just pull that off. That was barely on there. 
The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this clamp. You could either use a Phillips screwdriver or a 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna loosen this up and that should be loose enough. And then we're just gonna push this off. There we go. That's most of the way off. I'll get it off when I get the bolts off, I'll pull it off the rest of the way. You got the mass airflow sensor electrical connection. See this tab right here? You squeeze that in and pull up. Or you try to pull up. There we go. Now that's off. So now I'm going to get the bolts off. You need a longer extension for these other ones because they're kind of deep in there. And you got this final one in the back. And now this air box should come out. Okay. You can see now we have all this room to work with the air box out of the way. So I can easily get to the return line, which we're gonna be taking off. And then this is the pressure line that goes from the pump, feeds the steering rack, and then the fluid returns on this. So we're not gonna mess with this, but we're gonna take this off and couple it with the fuel injection hose that I bought for this job. So we're gonna slip this clamp off and slide it off this nipple. So we're just gonna grab a bent nose, needle nose pliers or whatever you want, channel locks, squeeze it, pull it down past the nipple so it's out of your way. I'm first gonna try my hand, see if I can slide it off and hey, look, that comes off. Looks like it's coming off. It's gonna come off, okay. So I'm gonna get this clamp just a little bit further down to where I'm not gonna be scraping my hand on it. Okay, so with the turkey baster, we were able to get the level and the power steering reservoir down a little bit, but probably not all the way below this nipple. So that means when I slide this return line off the nipple, power steering fluid or transmission fluid is gonna leak out. I have just this little plastic container, so I'm gonna slide this off with one hand and get this in place with the other as quickly as possible. So work this thing off, it's coming off. And I'm gonna get ready with this thing to capture it as soon as possible. And I'm gonna have a rag here too. Are we gonna make a mess with this? Most likely. Didn't do too bad, other than spraying a little bit of uh, power steering fluid on my face. <laughs> but we did make too bad of a mess. You had to be quick. I guess I need more ninja skills. So there's still fluid right to the top of the line. So I'm just gonna take a rag and turn it down a little bit to give me a little room to work. So it's not right at the very top. And then I'm gonna take my hose now with the coupler and I'm gonna slide it together like so. What we're finding now with our catch container underneath here, we're gonna have to tilt it a little bit to get it out. So we're just gonna take our turkey baster and suck some fluid out of this container so we don't make a mess when we try to get it out underneath the return fitting. Okay, so we're gonna slide our little catch container out of the way, and I got a hose clamp ready to go, and I'm gonna slide the short section with the bolt up on here. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab a regular straight edge screwdriver, and I'm gonna tighten that on. So I'm just gonna tighten this on. All right, so now we have the return line port on the side of the power steering reservoir blocked off. So now I'm gonna just use the OEM clamp to tighten the opposite side of that coupler. I'm just gonna squeeze it again and bring it up, bring it up to here and rest it on the other side of the nipple. So now the OEM return hose is now connected to the 3 8 fuel injection hose I'm using for the flush. So where are we gonna put our catch container? Well, it kind of sits pretty nicely right here. So we're just gonna balance it in here on these wires that go to the cruise control and it'll be fine. And then we're gonna run the line up here and it's gonna drain in here. And while we're doing the flush, I could monitor to see what color the fluid is looking like. And when it starts coming out nice and clean, I'll know we're done and we'll stop the procedure.
So now that we have everything connected for our flush procedure, now we're gonna get the air box back in because we want the air box back in because the mass airflow sensor connects there. And so we're just gonna put it back in, not bolt it in, but set it back in its space, hook up the air tube, hook up the mass airflow sensor and the other hoses, and then we'll be ready to start the flush procedure. Pick this sucker up and get it in place. Okay, so finally got that sucker in place. I'm gonna plug in the mass airflow sensor again. There we go, that's in all the way. Connect this tube back up, put the clamp in place, and then I'm just gonna tighten up this clamp a little bit. Okay. Okay, we got the air box back in. We're gonna to top off the fluid. We're gonna bring it up to where it would be on the cold level. Okay, that's good. Now we're ready for the flush procedure. During the flush procedure, I'm gonna have the funnel into the top of the reservoir. Jax is gonna start the engine and then he's gonna be turning the wheel lock to lock, all the way right, all the way left. At the same time, I'm gonna be pouring automatic transmission fluid into the funnel, into the reservoir, because I don't wanna run the pump dry. You know, It's not good to run pumps dry. I've seen other videos where they fill up the reservoir, they run it dry, and that's not good for a pump. My technique is gonna be, while the engine's running, as it's draining into the catch container and I'm watching what the color's looking like, I'm basically gonna be adding it while it's draining into the catch container so the pump never runs dry. Once I see that the fluid is looking nice and clean, then I'm gonna tell Jax to, to shut off the engine and we're gonna be done with the procedure. Now, this does have a chance to be messy, but I think because I have a funnel that fits the inner diameter of the top of the reservoir really well, I think I'm gonna be able to be successful without having it spilling out and making a mess while we're doing this. That's what I'm hoping for. Try to make as minimal of a mess as possible to get his fluid completely flushed and looking really good. Okay, so the reservoir is completely topped off. I have this thing pushed in kind of firm. You can see that it's in there nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. So it's almost kind of like sealing the top of the reservoir. The return line is no longer connected to the reservoir like it normally is. We have it connected to the 3 8 inch fuel injection hose with a coupler and it's going into the food grade gallon container over here. While the engine's running, that fluid is gonna be coming back from the steering rack and it's gonna be going into the catch container. And then I'm gonna be replacing the fluid by pouring new fluid in through the top of the reservoir. And that's how we're gonna keep the fluid running and avoid having the pump run dry. So that's our system. Now Jax is gonna get behind the driver's seat. He's gonna start it up while I'm gonna be pouring fluid in and he's gonna be turning the wheel all the way right, all the way left. Okay, Jax, I'm ready, go ahead and start it. Man, that happens a lot faster than I thought it was. I don't even know if we were replacing it as fast as it was going. If it's moving that fast, I don't even think we have to turn the wheel. It's pumping it through super fast. That fluid runs through the system a lot faster than I thought it was. Jax wasn't even turning the wheel and we went through a quart of fluid super fast. As fast as I was putting it in the top, it was coming out into the catch basin. So we ran one quart through, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna do it again. So Jax is gonna start it up and we're gonna do a whole nother quart and run another quart through the system. So Jax this time is actually gonna turn it, just kind of turn it slow, okay? Okay, go ahead. coming out pretty clean now, but it's probably getting a little air in the system. That's full two quarts. Okay, on that second quart, we actually had Jax turning the wheel, and I don't think that's a good idea because it's putting even more load and it's uh, having the fluid move even faster, and we don't want the fluid moving through the system any faster than it is. We're gonna start with the third quart, 
and Jack isn't going to touch the steering wheel. He's just going to start it up. Okay, go ahead. Stop. So now that we've gone through almost three quarts through the system, now we're gonna take the air box back out of our way. Now we're pulling the reservoir off. I'm just gonna keep this short section on the return hose on there. We again wanna get as much fluid out of the system as possible. So I'm just gonna come in here and draw out fluid. And you can see now that it's looking nice and red. Get as much of it out as possible. Okay. Okay, now to get even more fluid out of the reservoir so we make as little of a mess as possible when we take it off as I'm gonna loosen the clamp that's holding the little short section of hose that's blocking the return port and we'll slip this off and again we'll catch as much as we can with this little plastic thing. Yeah, this is going to be a messy job. Like I said, it's going to be a messy job. There's just no getting around it, I don't think. You're going to spill fluid, guaranteed. We're going to go for the front bolt first, and the way you access it is through the holes in the pulley itself. So if you find that the pulley is not lined up with one of the holes that you can get through to get to the bolt. You can either turn the crank bolt or you could just get a, a wrench on here and turn it a little bit to where the hole lines up where you can get through with the socket. I'm just gonna use a 3 8 drive with a longer socket to break that one free. All right, I'm gonna take it off the rest of the way with my gun. All right, it's a little shorty. So now we're going for the two back bolts. I'm gonna go for the one closest to the passenger fender. And again, it's a 12 millimeter, so I'm gonna get in there with my gun again. Here's the next one, and then the third one, final one, is gonna be right here. And that one's gonna have to take a box end wrench or open end wrench because there's little space between the bracket here and the bolt itself. So my gun's not gonna work for this application. That bolt's a little longer, so remember the orientation. So the little shorty one goes in the front. This first one on the back is longer. The next tool I'm gonna use to get the last bolt is just a longer box end 12 millimeter. I'm gonna use this side right here, and I'm gonna get on the bolt and loosen it up. So that one's free. You can actually see this thing wiggling a little bit. So I'm gonna use the little two finger method to get the back bolt out. It's tight in there, so you can't really get a hand back there. So I'm gonna basically twist the bolt with my two fingers to get it all the way backed out so I can remove it. Now that sucker's out. And again, you just try not to drop these things so you don't have to go looking for them. And this one, Looks like it's the exact same length as the other one on the backside. Here's another potential mess. The reservoir still has fluid in it and it seals up with the pump with the O-ring. So as soon as I pick this up to remove it, fluid's gonna come pouring out of the reservoir. So I'm gonna put some rags underneath here to hopefully catch most of it. Then I'm gonna get my plastic container here and hopefully transfer it over create the least amount of mess as possible. That's the goal. So it appears that the port that the reservoir connects to in the pump is right here. So I'm gonna have to pull the reservoir towards the passenger side, kind of up and towards the passenger side to free it of the pump. And then I'm gonna have a rag in my hand to get ready to stick it 
underneath there and hopefully not make a huge mess. There's an O-ring that's gonna have to get out of there. Feel it come in? Ooh, okay. There's stuff leaking out a little bit here, out of the pump. But that was actually my least mess yet. Okay, so I'm gonna unblock the port now, and you can see the fluid coming out of the reservoir. And it's nice and clean because we just got done flushing it. And then let me point something out here. This is the O-ring, this little black jobber here. It's kind of hard to see because everything's black. But right there, that's the O-ring that seats with the power steering pump and creates a leak-proof seal. So make sure that that's intact. So what we're gonna do to be able to show you how blocked up and dirty the screen on the bottom of the reservoir is, is I'm gonna use my little headlamp. I'm gonna direct light into the bottom port that connects up to the power steering pump. And then you're gonna be able to see on top that there's very little light coming through. There is some, but the screen covers the whole circumference of this reservoir and there's not a whole lot of light coming through. So I'm directing the light. And you could look in there and you could see a lot of black and a little bit of light. I would say he's probably about 75% to 80% blocked, which is not good. The lid on the reservoir has these tabs. And I saw in a write-up where a guy bent the tabs back and pulled the whole lid off to where he could have an easier job cleaning out the screen on the inside. It looks doable, but it also looks like a pain. And it also looks like a chance to mess up the top of the lid if you bend this maybe a little too much and you deform it too much or maybe you break one of these tabs off. We're not gonna go that route, but we wanted to mention this as a possibility. If you're finding that you can't get it very clean with the method we're gonna show you next, you do have the option of bending these tabs out of the way and pulling the whole lid off so you have better access to the screen. So my idea is I wanna force the debris out the top, so I'm gonna use the clean streak first and direct it into the bottom and then let the junk pour out into my catch basin. Wow, that thing's pretty dirty. We need to get the light and see how we're doing. Going through the bottom wasn't getting the results I thought I would, so I'm gonna try spraying it through the top and try to loosen some of that debris. Seems to be working. Oh yeah, it's a lot cleaner now, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to get all the junk out of there, but it's looking better. We went from the bottom, then tried from the top, and then went back to the bottom. Going through the bottom is working better. You have to direct the hose at all different angles and basically try to force the black gunk out of the filter and out through the top. I put a little angle into the hose. I just bent it with my hand to where I can get to all areas of the screen because you have just a little port to be working with. I've got it bent and just directing it at different angles to get it cleaner. It's a slow process, but it's getting much cleaner than it was before. Another technique I'm doing is I'm spraying through the top first to hopefully loosen up the black gunk and then going in through the bottom to kind of force it out. So spray a little bit right up against the screen. and then follow it up from the bottom. And I could see little chunks coming out, so there's quite a bit of gunk coming out of there. So we finally got this thing really clean. I pretty much almost went through two cans, the clean streak and brake clean. As you start to run out, see how this has very little propulsion, not much force? Well. The more force you have coming in through the bottom, the better it is it's gonna force that gunk out of the fine mesh screen. So see how much more propulsion that has? That helps you get the junk free of the screen. So now we're gonna put the light in the bottom and we're gonna show you how much cleaner this thing is. It's, it's night and day. So you can look in there now. It started off being about 80% clogged. Now I would say it's pretty much unclogged all the way like maybe only clogged by 1%, 2%. So just by 
spraying it in through the top, spraying it through the bottom, loosening up all that junk, you can finally get that fine mesh screen really clean. Brake cleaner and that other clean streak, it's gonna dry eventually, but if you're a little impatient and you got stuff to do, I'm using my air compressor, and with an air compressor, you can turn down the pressure. So I have this down like maybe to about 30 PSI, really low, very light air. So you're not gonna be jamming up really high pressure air. And I'm just gonna direct a little bit in there. The main thing I don't wanna do is displace that screen. So I'm just gonna shoot light air through there, not a lot of pressure, just to help the drying process. Maybe a little in from the bottom too. Okay, the reservoir is nice and clean now. We sprayed a little air in there to speed up the drying process of the leftover brake cleaner or that clean streak in there. Now this rubber O-ring should be lubricated. If you look down at the pump right here, there's fluid there, but I'm just gonna dip my finger right there into the pump and just lubricate it a little bit to make sure that it's gonna get a nice seal. So the main thing is the O-ring is actually there. It's intact, it's not torn. Lubricated a little bit, and now we're just gonna slide it in place on the pump. There we go, it's fully seated. Now we're gonna get our bolt started. So I'm gonna go for one of the back bolts first, the one that's closest to the, the passenger fender. And get that one started first. And then I'm going to go for the rear one that's the hardest to get to. This one, you're going to have to be careful not to drop it as you're trying to get it in. I'm going to reach in with two fingers, get it lined up with the hole there. It's a little tough, but then again, use the two finger method to tighten it in place. Okay, so both the back ones are hand tight. With the front one, I'm just gonna put it in this long 12 millimeter socket to help direct it in there. And that one's threading in. And now we're gonna torque these to spec. The only problem is, is I'm not gonna be able to get a torque wrench on that back one closest to the engine. So I'm just gonna have to go by feel for this one, but I can't torque the front one and I can torque the one on the backside closest to the passenger fender. All right, I'm gonna use my little shorty inch pound torque wrench, so we have to do a conversion. This front bolt, the spec is nine foot pounds, nine foot pounds converts to 108 inch pounds. So that's what I'm gonna torque the front one, 108 inch pounds. Remember, that was a little shorty bolt. That's it. Now I'm gonna bring my torque wrench up to 204 inch pounds because the rear two bolts are 17 foot pounds and 17 foot pounds converts to 204 inch pounds. Okay, that one's good. Now remember this one back in here I can't get a torque wrench on there, so I am just gonna cinch it up with a box end 12 millimeter that I use to take it off and just get it nice and snug and call it good. So remember, I'm just using this longer box end wrench to get in there. Now remember the laws of mechanical advantage. The longer the lever, the more leverage. So I'm gonna choke up on this a little bit. I don't wanna go too freaking tight because it's just holding the reservoir on there. It's not like you're like tightening the, the head onto the block of your engine. It doesn't have to be that freaking close and accurate. Okay, we're done there. I'm gonna loosen the constant tension clamp and take pressure off the barb that's underneath there to where I can pull this hose out of here. So, is it coming loose? Hmm, maybe a little bit. There we go. Oh, and more, more mess. Jacks don't mind, do you, Jacks? Okay. So now we got our hose out of the way, the one we used for the flush job. And now we're going to reconnect the return hose to the nipple of the reservoir.
I'm going to use a little bit of fluid here to lubricate this thing so it's easier to slide on. And we're going to slide this back on. Boom. Goes the dynamite. Get your constant tension clamp back in place. And that's good. We're gonna get the air box back in. So we're gonna dive in this way. And we're gonna kind of get it started in here. So we're gonna slide that into the air tube. I'll go ahead while I'm here and connect up the mass airflow sensor, pull back, make sure it's clipped in there. Make sure that the air tube is pushed into the tube on the side here. There we go. Now we can get our bolt started. Get that sucker in there. You see this, this whole like sleeve came with it. And that might happen with you, so you just gotta push it back down there through there. We're gonna tighten these up. Am I even gonna bother with the torque spec with these? No. It's holding a plastic air box to the body. Do you really need a torque spec for it? No. You don't. Just don't over tighten it. I would err on the side of being too loose rather than too tight. You just don't want to strip it. All right, so we've got the air box in tight. Remember to get this little air tube back connected. Get the constant tension clamp in place. Tighten up this clamp right here to the air tube. So you see this little hose dangling? Jacks came up a little short here. It's not the right size tube, so he needs to get another tube. So if you're watching the video, we didn't forget this. That's why this is not connected. It doesn't reach. So he swapped over the intake from a different third gen, and the hose doesn't reach. He needs to get another hose for this. Now we need to top off the reservoir. We're gonna fill it up to the cold level, cold level. So this thing fills up pretty fast, so don't be too aggressive with how fast you're pouring it in. Pour a little at a time, and then you're gonna take a sample with your dipstick until you get it all the way to the top of the cold level. We now have it filled up right to here. And that's the top of the cold level. If you flip it over, this is the top of the hot level. We've got it properly filled. Now, we're gonna close this up Jax is going to start the vehicle and we're just going to have him turn the wheel back and forth and this is going to help force any air out of the system back up into the reservoir and then we're going to recheck the level to, to see if it's at the top of the cold level. Okay, Jax is going to start the engine and then just slowly turn it all the way to the left, all the way to the right a couple times. Yep, a little bit more. Not a whole lot. So Jax started the engine, turned the wheel back and forth a few times, and the level dropped just a little bit. I'm gonna have him start it again and do the same thing. Turn it and lock the lock. We're just trying to work the bubbles out of the system. So go ahead, Jax. And you can see, you can have the cap off, so I'm just looking at the top, the, the fluid swirling around and flowing. So this was a lot more frothy, a lot more bubble showing. So we think we got most of the air out of the system, but it will slowly work its way out just by driving. We're now going to turn it off and take another sample of the level. Okay, go ahead and shut it off. After that second series of starting and turning the wheel back and forth, the level dropped again. That means more air worked its way out of the system. So we're gonna again, top it off to the top of the cold level. A little bit more.
Okay, we're gonna do it a third time. And what we wanna see is that after we get done with it, the level doesn't really drop anymore. So go ahead, Jack, start it, and then start turning the wheel. Does it? Yeah. Really? Well, I mean, it's not whining as much as it did last time. Yeah, it didn't drop this time. Then it, it came up. It's warming up a little bit. So on level ground, make sure that your level is at the top of the cold level. And again, the top of the cold level is right here. And that's where he's currently at right now. So what you're going to want to see after driving it for a while is when you take a sample again on level ground, you're at the top of the hot level. Jax is going to be on his own for that. He's going to drive it around. He'll stop the vehicle on level ground. He'll take a sample. And if it's a little bit low, then he'll top it off to the top of the hot level and then he'll be good to go. So here's a visual representation of what we accomplished with the flush. This was the fluid that we were pushing out through the return line into this container, pretty darn dark. And actually some of this that's mixed in here is actually fresher fluid because it started coming out clear well before it got to this top, but we just ran some extra through just to be sure. You can see that some newer fluid mixing with the really dark older fluid came up with that color. And this is a representation of fresh automatic transmission fluid right out of a container. So you can see the contrast, pretty big difference. We are done with this job. We showed you two things. We showed you an additional method to flush your system. Instead of doing the low tech turkey baster, slowly exchanging the fluid, we showed you how to exchange it all in one shot. When we did that exchange, we learned that the pump moves that fluid to the steering rack and back pretty fast. So as fast as I was pouring that new fluid through into the funnel and into the reservoir, it was ejecting out that return line hose that we had going into the catch container. You have to pour fast and you're basically trying to not starve that pump and, and hurt the pump. So I think we sort of kept up with it, but we might have been actually a little bit slow at replacing it at the same speed it was leaving. I think it still worked pretty darn good. We never caused the pump to run dry and uh, starve the pump of fluid and put extra strain on the pump. Then the next thing we showed you is how to pull the reservoir off. Just three small bolts and you could pull the reservoir off. The next thing you have to do is just pretty much go through a couple cans of carb cleaner or brake cleaner and spray it through the top first then spray it through the bottom, shake it out, and repeat that process over and over again. It did help to grab the little red nozzle and be, put a bend into it so you can get at all the angles. And after going through two full cans, you can see that we showed that that screen was pretty much like 95% clean. It went from pretty much being only like 20% clean, maybe even less than that, to being almost all the way clean. So now, his delivery of fluid from the pump to the steering rack and back is going to be way more efficient. He's not starving his steering rack of fluid and we're going to rely on Jax to get back to us and report if his steering is feeling better. And we'll put that in the actual video description along with the torque specs and the little parts I bought at O'Reilly and Home Depot for this job. So we hope you learned something today. We thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and special guest Jax. Hello. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care. Bye bye. So 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 and we'll put
that in